Hello you all, everything in this video refers to free dive training dry, that is out of the water, doing it wet, that is in the water, can be potentially very dangerous and you should always be done with someone around. Uh, if you like this video then let me know below and anything else that you would like me to do, put it in the comments section and like and subscribe before listening to one of the great legends of free diving tell all of us how to breathe. So tell me a little bit about your goals and your objectives and what 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 you're thinking here. So uh, I have been doing um, two ser series where um, it's not been possible to use scuba. Most of my training is having to be done on dry land. Having managed to get to five minutes static apnea, I, I kind of set myself a target of six. Um, and I, I, the the best person in the world to ask is is you maybe i mean my breath hold i maxed out the best i ever did was six and a half minutes and i was super proud of that because i can do anything when i'm you know several hundred feet underwater but if if it's just you know lifting your head up and the air is right there it turns out that i didn't really have a passion for that quite so much but i definitely i definitely utilized a lot of the same training techniques um, for my deep diving as I did for static apnea. So I think there's there's a there's a translation. I think I can offer you some advice and some tips. So you are doing five minutes dry, which is phenomenal by the way. Dry breath hold. I hope that you're laying flat on a couch or better yet the floor, nothing you can fall off and hit your head or anything. But dry breath hold is is infinitely harder than wet because when you're in water you have all this stimulus on your on your face like your nerve endings around your eyes and your mouth tell your brain that you're in water and that mammalian dive reflex gets kicked in even stronger so you can condition your mammalian dive reflex dry as well but it's definitely easier to do it wet so the other side the other thing to say is that yes breath hold helps dive time but the correlation isn't really solid. Like, for example, I think I had set three or four world records for depth before I could hold my breath for over three minutes. And some of my dives were taking more than three minutes. So holding my breath in a pool for three, three and a half minutes, I just didn't have the mental capacity for. Breath hold, free diving, it, it really relies on a very efficient cardiovascular system. That You know, your, your body's ability to take up and use oxygen um, and so the, 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 the more anaerobically fit you are, the better conditioned your body is to, to do those things. Um, I'm with you. I can't run. I'm too old. My knees have given up. It takes forever to get fit again. And it's really depressing. <laughs> so I do understand. Um, and then having limited time, uh, you know, to be able to do it. So, so I would say in the background, you know, you keep up with your physical training. Being as physically fit as you can be is always going to put you in the best possible position for your heart and lungs working really efficiently together. And the next side then is, you know, you, you take these deep breaths when you free dive. You know, you take a lot of them before you do the actual dive. And then you take that one deep breath when you dive, which is really more about volume for equalization. Like there's maybe some breathing and stretching exercises that I can briefly show you um, that just give that, that are, you know, they're just going to give you another thing to factor in, which I think could have a marginal effect on improving breath hold, but a really a bigger effect on approving your mental approach to all of this. I you know, for, for 20 years, I've had to try to reconcile, like, how is it that I, you know, I'm a, I'm a fairly small person. How is it that I could do these crazy things that I could do that, you know, people that were bigger than me, men that were more determined than me, whatever they couldn't do. And, you know, I think I've, I've had to accept that a, a lot of it was mental. So I rely on that a lot. All of the training that I did in a gym and in a pool, I detested every minute of it, but I did it every day in the week, knowing that on a Saturday afternoon, I could sit at the back of the boat, knowing that quite frankly, I deserved to be able to get to the depth that I did. And it, it, it just did this thing in my brain where I was, I was unstoppable sometimes, not always, you know, with the, there, I, I'm not super proud of every dive I ever pushed that hard on because sometimes the line of 
of, of pushing and pushing too far was blurred. And I, I had a good team around me to say, okay, we're done. You know, that we don't, we don't have to push any further. But I do think that these little things that you tweak, even though you're not going for some world record performance, I think that they play hugely on your mental approach and your mental strength for then that repetitive nature of up, down, up, down, up, down, knowing that your physiology is capable and that sometimes it's just your mind talking you out of it is huge. Okay, can you see, so I tend to sit cross-legged like this and I will, this will serve to loosen you up because of the stretching component of it. And then also maximize the flexibility of your rib cage. When you finished growing in your late teens or so, your lung capacity was set. You know, you're, it's, it's based on how tall you are, how wide you are, how much you weigh, everything else. And that's set, but what isn't set and what tends to restrict your true lung capacity is your rib cage, right? Because your ribs, your lungs go from the bottom of your rib cage all the way up to here. That's how big your lungs are. But mo modern day people, especially adults, we tend to breathe with about the top third. We're breathing with our, our chest, which is really, really inefficient. Your lungs are like, like heads of broccoli or cauliflower, but turned upside down. So you've got the bronchioles all sort of here, but the real goodness in your lungs, the, the, the maximum amount of alveoli, the, the place where the greatest rate of respiration takes place, which is the exchange of gases, is down here in the lower part. But we all hold our tummies in and breathe from our chest especially men, because you have these big barrel chests. So what we do as free divers is we have trained ourselves to do more belly breathing. If you watch a dog or a baby or your kids when they sleep, they're belly breathers. That's the first part. When you are floating on the surface of the water, pretty much the only thing you need to be thinking of, of is, am I belly breathing? Because that's about all you can do when you're in the water in that situation, is make sure that you're not breathing through the snorkel like, but you're breathing. So if I turn sideways, you'll see that I'm talking about. So by sticking your stomach out, as you breathe in, you're obviously not breathing into your stomach, but you're pushing your diaphragm down. By, by pushing your stomach out, activating your abdominal muscles to push your stomach wall out, right? Your lower abdominal wall out. You're allowing your diaphragm, which is normally up like this under your ribs, and therefore your lungs are above it, to drop down because you're pushing your intestines and other organs kind of out of the way. So allowing space for your diaphragm to drop down, which allows this lower part of your lungs to expand. It's really helpful if you even incorporate a visual element to that with each breath. Everybody knows that visualization is super, super powerful. And so in terms of your brain muscle connection, if you're visualizing certain muscles being activated, it just sort of increases the efficiency and the muscle memory that ultimately you'll get. So you'll be able to take this back into the water. So you start with a very deep exhale. forgot to explain the diaphragm contraction the sucking up of my diaphragm the reason i did that you know diaphragm is a muscle so the more you build it the more you use it the better the muscle memory the better the strength of it for me it meant that i would have the strength to really you know stick my stomach out expand down as much as possible the up part was part of my exhale you don't want stale air in your lungs ever. And stale air tends to hang around the bottom of your lungs. So you really want to make sure, as important as your deep breath and your, your, your breathing in is for your preparation for a dive, your exhale is every bit, I would argue, possibly more important. You don't want stale air down there. And remember that carbon dioxide is the gas that triggers your need to breathe, that air hunger, or even contra your actual contractions in your chest. So the exhale is super important. Now you're not doing that when you're floating on the surface of the water. It uses a lot of energy, but you're doing it as the exercise to, to strengthen that part of your body, yeah? 
And so I take the, 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 the deep breath, say, and then I exhale all the way down. I hold my breath while I pull my diaphragm up. And I kind of hold that kind of like you're flexing a muscle, like you're working the muscle. So I hold it and contract it and then relax it again to spit a little bit more air out. I kind of always think of, you know, a, a loaf of bread. And after a while, after you've used it, you sort of squish the air out and then you, you know, then you tie the knot and there's no air making your bread stale. I think about that as sort of what's going on with my lungs with that deep exhale. Um, and then you do have to, this is where, you know, the brain muscle communication is really important. And it's something that can take people quite a long time to master. You have to relax those abdominal muscles before you then can really inhale. The reason is it takes a lot of abdominal strength to like to push. You're really using them in their heart and then Wow. And so hard and then squidgy. Now they have to be squidgy because you can't, if they're, if they're tense, you can't expand them. So you, you have to find a way, and this might be the most challenge. You'll either get it like that or it'll end up being super challenging. That pause where you go, okay, relax. So you're tight, tight, tight. And then relax and then you begin your inhale and it's again the visualization of putting air into the lower part of your lungs is great but in reality you're just inhaling while you stick your stomach out it is nothing more complicated than that you know that that big breath puts puts strain and pressure on your sternum and this lower part where your ribs aren't quite joined but they're and you feel like you're gonna crack right there. And that's good, because that means you have a deep breath. And what you're doing gradually, repeatedly like this, is you're taking your rib cage from, you know, it's joined at the top and your ribs are quite close together to just opening, you're not gonna open up where it's joined, but you're opening up the intercostal muscles. You're, 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 you're allowing everything to stretch. When I was really active freediving, I, I could fit two fingers in between each of my ribs. Such was the flexibility of the rib cage, which you need when you want that really deep breath for volume if you're going to equalize to 500 feet, which is what I was doing. And then you also need to, you know, I was conditioning my body to be really, really compressed because, you know, as uh, under several atmospheres of pressure, you, you really feel compressed and tight. So that was more conditioning work for going super, super deep. But again, if it's allowing your lungs to get to what their true capacity is, you know, and outside of the rib cage constraints, then that helps a lot. The other thing that you would have seen me do is, you know, I do my stomach and then I do my chest and then I almost kind of round out. I might lift my shoulders and round out through my back. There's a hell of a lot of lung space back here, especially on a guy your size. So I'm, I'm really, I mean, when we free dive, we're breaking it down into four. We go one, two, three, four. For these purposes of training, you know, it's just kind of a lower half, upper half, but your upper half can definitely involve you opening up your shoulder blades and allowing air into the, you know, stretching of that part of your rib cage and air into the back of the lungs. And then finally, like everything up through here and then just hold for a second because it that then you're full and you feel a stretch. Now, you do sort of need to do this sitting up. Don't hold your breath for too long. Even just doing the breathing itself, you know, can get you a little lightheaded. It's changing the pH value of your blood. You're really taking a lot of carbon dioxide out of your blood, which can, you know, has various difficult, different physiological responses. And one of them, it can make you a little lightheaded. If you feel some, I used to feel like once I got that tingling in my hands and that kind of weird almost like numb sensation in my head. I felt hyper oxygenated and I was, I was ready to go. But in terms of, you know, then what translates into you in the water, you're, you're, you're just working on flexibility and muscle groups that will work better when you're floating on the surface of the water. And, you know, there's a degree of hydrostatic pressure. You feel it. It's harder to breathe against a wetsuit and against a little bit of pressure in the water and strengthening these muscles and conditioning them for this is only going to help you there. That makes yeah. sense. It, it, it totally does. And I mean, I'm so far away from what I just saw you do. <laughs> um, you know, there, there's, I, I've got so much work to do just to even start to get to, to what 
I, I'm seeing from you in in that flex, flexibility in in your stomach and your diaphragm and you and I haven't even started with the the opening up. That's not something I've ever even seen. Just before. That, you know, it's it's almost hard for me to not do because even though it's I mean it's 20 years ago that I was really active competing, but part of that just sort of never goes. You know that that muscle memory and that that habit. Like I always close my eyes. The other thing I think that might be helpful for me to show you, and I might do it on that little bit of floor right there. I hope I don't get mobbed by dogs. <laughs> I'm just going to show you a couple stretches that might help, you know, open up this area. But otherwise, I'm talking about taking a, a full breath, not the whole shebang, but just, and then it's infinitely harder to do it on a full breath than when you're empty. Like if I exhale, you're stretching all through here, these intercostal, you know, your rib cage again. And then by leaning forward a little, you get a really great stretch through this back area as well. Okay. And then you're going to want to repeat that on the other side. And you can do it, what I refer to as empty, like without a full breath to start with. This, this could be the, the thing you start out with before every breath holding session, or even when you're on the on the boat getting ready to jump in the water. Like this is absolutely what I would be doing. Empty, stretching, really working through here, tipping it forward a little. I would even climb across the floor, come up, stretch, elbow on the floor, stretching out. If you can't get your elbow, start here. And then the next level is, Wow. Much harder, much more stretch, you know, start empty, then do it with a breath. And the only other one that I would say that I did was also empty. And really empty. And then full. It's a lot of stretching. It's a lot of loosening up of some, you know, really important muscular structure through here, through your back, a lot of muscles there. And especially when you bench pressing all your children, your muscles are going to be tight and they need to be loose for you to be the most, you know, efficient when you're breathing. That, that is absolutely phenomenal. I cannot believe that you've just shared all that with me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's like a monster <laughs> class right here on my deck. I'm happy to do it. I would just say, you know, it's got to be the caveat that you and anybody else who starts practicing it, you know, you, you truly need to be baby steps, nice and slow. And ideally with, you know, you're doing this dry, you're not doing any of it wet and you're not doing it alone wet ever. And even dry, not a terrible idea to at least have you know adults somewhere around if you adult another person is somewhere around and I mean the worst case scenario really is that you, you might get a little bit lightheaded and you know kind of lose it for a second I don't think you're gonna you know don't fall off a chair that's why I sat on the floor um and you know you're never going to unless you've got some other medical issue going on you know you're not going to kill yourself holding your breath and doing breathing exercises dry you might surprise yourself a little sometimes by the symptoms that you get and even if worst case scenario you do black out you know you on your breath hold laying down on the sofa or doing any of this breathing highly unlikely but if you did your brain has all the stimulus from those same nerve endings around your mouth and your eyes to tell you that you're in air and you will breathe immediately it would just be like fainting take a breath and wake up again. So uh, not to minimize it, but also just to make you understand that I'm not sitting here teaching you or anybody anything that's going to, you know, they could really get themselves into trouble for. for sure. Well, you have my, my absolute word that I absolutely won't be doing any of this uh, do not do it again. In, in the water unless, you know, even if I've got someone with me, only if I've got someone who really knows what they're doing with me they do they need to be confident not just yeah i'll watch you but i'm also prepared to turn you the right way up rub your face blow on your face and have a cell phone nearby if you need to call anybody i mean in water stuff is very very different and i i don't doubt that you're being super safe with that yeah. <laughs> busy 
Well, well, good luck. Will you keep me posted? So of course I will. Of course I will. Okay. And uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough. And I'll, I'll let you know how it goes.